to another fantastic SVU League of Legends stream. I am your host, Kevin Zuko Lamb. I am joined by no one today because we are playing at 10 p.m. This is game three of this best of three that we started on Friday. And this is going to be a very exciting game. I'm unbelievably hyped up for this one. And yeah, if we win this, I'm going to be happy. This is going to be this is a this is a great matchup. We saw a close game one, SVU eking out through a laning phase and then dominating the mid and late game. And in game two, Swanee came in and annihilated SVU in laning phase and rolled over the game with that rift held top play. If you missed those games, be sure to go back and check those out because they were awesome. So we're in a game three situation here. Um, we saw the big difference between game one and game two was the mid laner for Sawani. He went with Ari game one, got clapped by five, six, seven, seven. Let's just be honest because he resuscitated it in game two, brought it back and annihilated five, six, seven, seven in game two. So this matchup is now a rivalry between these two mid laners. And we're seeing Sanji go back to a bruiser, his top lane picks, one of his best champions, the Aatrox. SVU's comp here is very poke, disengage heavy, while we have Sawani's comp, very bruiser heavy, but not a lot of engage. So flanks are going to be huge this game. If Sawani can find flanking angles, if they can make some flash plays, they can get into the back line of SVU, they're going to run rampant with them. But if they can't, SVU is going to poke them out, get advantages, and hopefully set up for objectives. So... This is the spectator delay, as all of you know. We do have a little bit of a delay between the game and the stream to keep competitive, competitive integrity. But other than that, this is going to be a hype game three. And this will put the SVU Knights in prime position to be on top of the group if they win this. There's only a handful of teams that are going to be three and one. And if SVU can win this, they will be among them. So... This is a huge game here, huge game three. We'll see if SVU can play smart and uh, get it done. So, 12 seconds here. The other thing I want to look at is we did see the bands get kind of mixed up here by Swanee. They banned out Pleasant Plant in game two where they got the win. And this time they threw two bands towards 5677, seven, his Oriana and his Talon. So they were not wanting him to feel comfortable while they let Pleasant Plant get his Vi, which is one of his best champions. So that's an interesting decision they made. And the Braum <laughs> went over to SVU. They first picked it. We saw the Braum win both game one and game two. So we'll have to see if that trend continues. For all you SVU fans, I know you want that to continue. Um, for everyone else, well, you don't want it to continue if you're not an SVU fan. But I don't know why you'd be here, except for the fact that our streams are amazing. So. Let's see what happened here. We're loading into the game real quick. And then this bot lane. We saw Yosenki. He was a very aggressive bot laner, but he's on the Caitlyn. Now, Caitlyn is deceptively aggressive. Uses her range to really poke and harass, but she doesn't really dive in like you would a Lucian or a Tristana or a Samira. So he may be looking to play a little smarter around his team just kind of set up that vision line um we'll see if svu is able to survive laning phase because that was a big issue that we saw in game two um really hoping that they have made some adjustments we had a long weekend there to both teams a lot of time to scout it out figure out what they wanted to do um all right so we're transitioning to the live game here we go your svu knights are in blue this time they will be on your left side of your screen for the most part. Um, Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Get this set up real quick. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, let's see how this is unfolding. So, we got the basic defensive level one here. That's typically what we've seen all series. Um,. No weird summoner spells. We got Metal All Luric Dread. I don't know why his name is so hard to say. Uh, he's on this Warwick. We saw him win with that in game two. 
Uh, he didn't really do a lot. It was mainly Sanji. Righteous Blank had a good game. Willy Wonka returning on the Jace. We haven't seen this pick out of him in a while. Um, he does like the Jace. He usually is on Mundo Duty or another tank, but they letting him letting him fly free here with the Jace. They're running the Brom. Kind of gives him another tanky option. The Vi, I'm sure, will be building tanky into this all AD squad um, from Sawani. So... Should be pretty slow going early here. Um, as for you looking to play patient, play far back. Um, just kind of farm their lanes while Swanee's looking to get in close. And uh, I don't think laning phase will be as volatile as we saw in the past. And whenever you have a range versus melee, which is what we have in mid and top, uh, you don't really ever see many kills because... The melee knows the range has the advantage, and the range is so far away that they don't really care. Uh, so, probably not going to be a very exciting early game, but nonetheless, we will see what happens. Honey T-Bone down here on the Braum. 5677 gets not level 2 yet. Takes kind of a bad trade there, but he should be fine healing back up and poking out the Aatrox. We'll see this early pathing here from Pleasant Plant. You looking for the 3 camp into a gank possibility um we're seeing both the mid and top wave shove in from swanee so we'll see if svu baits out a good gank or if uh, vi can find the angle here pleasant plant um top lane scuttle is going to be risky for pleasant plant to go for because he doesn't have prio but he's going for an early cheeky gank here on the riven don't know if he has it warded looks like he's respecting it he might have had that ward. I don't see a ward up there, so much has been his spidey senses. But here's 5677 going hard onto Aatrox and gets a first blood! That is a huge first blood redemption kill for 5677. And that's what we wanted to see out of this guy. He did not like getting killed by that Wukong last game, and he's looking for some revenge. Huge play out of him. Comes Vi, knowing that top side is not really where she wants to be. Going bot side, getting the scuttle is huge. There's a ginormous wave top for Chase, but luckily Warwick is not nearby to dive him, so that should just be easily cleaned up by him. And this is looking a lot better for SVU than Game 2 did last Friday. Um, they're really starting out. You, they're, they're being smart here, being patient, and that's really how they need to play this one out. Play patient and slow. Uh, we do see Warwick moving up towards the top side. He got they traded Scuttles. He might look for a dive on the Jace, but I believe in Willy Wonka's ability to outplay that, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, looks like we're farming bot lane quite a bit. Every lane seems pretty even. Um, this is the first game we saw Willy Wonka in this series, not on the Mundo. Um, and that, I think, kind of tells the tale of why he's only down one CS. I think him on the Mundo, while it's helpful in team play, helpful later in the game, really struggles against some of these bruisers. But you can see him on the Jace here coming in with a trade. See how he's able to trade back there and not really have to worry about the Riven as much as he would on the Mundo. He's able to keep up and farm. Very hard to freeze versus Jace. He has that Shock Blast that'll just clear the wave, shove it in. Um, so... Willy Wonka feeling good. He's got a humongous wave up here. Trying to shove this in. This is a gank opportunity for Warwick, though. Let's look at that Warwick on your mini-maps. Also, a gank happening, happening mid. But I think Willy Wonka should be able to use his brain here and not die. Just going to poke. Smart play out of him. Doesn't get baited underneath the tower to harass Riven. And that's going to be wasted time out of the Warwick. Huge play out of Willy Wonka. I know for you new, new viewers, you don't see it much, but how that's great but that's really good by him just shoving that wave in not being greedy um and this is a huge gank here by vi onto the aatrox abusing the aggression five six seven seven is up two to zero against this aatrox huge gank out of pleasant plant use the flash the disrespect from sanji trying to abuse that lane but the lux is too far away for him to be able to deal with it and that's a great play out of him 5677 is looking to carry this game from the Lux, and that would be huge for him. Here goes Brom going in. There's the Black Shield. No mana on the Brom. Ezreal looking low. They're going to have to give up a wave here, I think, to Ezreal and Morgana unless uh, against this Morgana Caitlyn. Um, it's going to be hard to get a, get a good back off here when you're this low, unless the jungler comes down. And as we can see, 
no junglers are in the vicinity. So Ezreal trying to farm this up. He's going to have to eventually lose a wave. And he has been falling behind a little bit in farm here. Morgana Caitlyn is a very hard lane. They have a lot of range. Um, but the Ezreal Braum should be quite potent in the mid and late game. So being down CS isn't the worst thing possible. And there comes a fight for the second scuttle. Atrax deciding to go bot side, though. This is an interesting rotate from him. Not sure if he really... What his plan is here. Kind of should have went top side to help Warwick fight the Vi off, But decided to go bot side. Might have a big brain long term plan. And here comes the Lux trying to get some poke on him. But she's getting a little too close. You don't want to be this close to an Atrox. He has that humongous sword and he is not afraid to use it. Trades in top lane. Righteous Blank not seeing the, the, the success that he had in the previous two games against Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka on this Jace really helping... You know, stop the bleeding from this matchup. Um, she's trading into him. Wonder if he's able to trade back. Yes, there's the hammer throw. She uses the old good flash out of Willy Wonka. That is a good flash. It is unfortunate that he has to use it, but if you're going to use it, at least he'd live to tell the tale. So, oh, here comes this. And right when I spoke, he goes back in and gets flashed on by the ribbon. Very unfortunate there. You hate to see that. And. That is where he's just getting a little too close, and you, we do not want to see this Riven getting too powerful. Um, Willy Wonka needs to keep his distance there. But he has the TP, should be able to get back up and get that farm. So, and here comes the gank bot side by Warwick. Swammer and Honey t pone looking to get out of this one. There's the flash in. No, the flash out from Braum. They bait him kind of deep, and that's Warwick having to flash defensively. Not what you want to see, but here's another fight, and that's the kill going over to Caitlyn. Swammer was just too aggressive there with his E and then he got binded up and here comes the TP. This is not a good fight coming out of Pleasant Plant. SVU is getting baited into fights they don't want. They're playing way too aggressively here. They need to just chill and farm. They are just getting baited in there and then it turns on its head and now Caitlyn is 2-0 and oh, when before she just had a CS lead. Now she has a CS lead and kill lead. So SVU needs to get back into their game plan and just stall out these lanes, wait for the team fighting phase of the game because this is not what they signed up for here goes five six seven seven and on the atrax but atrax should be able to kill him here and there's the counter flash by him does get out alive that's good by him survives that but he's getting too close to his pink wards he keeps getting baited and here comes the snipe and that's going to be a kill back over to caitlin caitlin is now three and oh and that is a few kills given over by svu that were very unnecessary so they need to get their battle lines reset up they need to get their vision out there but they really need to get their vi involved the Pleasant Plant tried to gank bot side, but it just forced the TP, and then it hit his death. So, good uh, good on them to get the TP out. Here goes F Swammer going in for the kill. No, doesn't quite get the ulti off. The flash from Morgana was good. Got her out alive. That is just an ult burn, though, for a flash on Morgana, and that's pretty positive play for SVU. So, gold is only 1,000. Not nearly bad enough to be concerned. We'll have to see. Um... We are seeing, oh, here we go. Pleasant Plant going in on the Atrox, but misses the bind. 5677 couldn't hit the bind there, but Pleasant Plant gives him the Fist of Doom. That is the Vi that he is known for, and that was a fantastic play out of Pleasant Plant. That was a huge kill. Main problem, though, is this Caitlyn is 3-0 with her Dust Blade. She is going for the Dust Blade lethality type build of Caitlyn, which... Honestly, if SVU can just survive, they should be able to just counter that with all the armor they're going to build because Swanee is all AD. So, it's not too concerning if they can be patient. And so far, we have not seen patience out of SVU. So, that is a tall order. So, top lane. Bye. Going for this Rift Herald. This is a heads up play. Should be pretty free. Uh, after getting that kill on Aatrox, we have... Cryo in the mid lane with the Lux. And um, yeah, so that's the Rift Tail picked up for Vi. And we'll have to see how he can use that. If he can get plates with it, that would be ideal. Plates do depart at 14 minutes, so he'd have to use the Rift Tail before then um, to get a charge off. But not sure where he's going to want to put that. It's really hard to put it bot lane. Uh, 5677 dodging out of that Aatrox knockups, but Warwick is there. There's Willy Wonka going a little aggressive, trying to get this shoved in. The Lux does see the gank mid, so nothing crazy happening here. We'll have to see if they can outplay in the future. 
So, Aatrox, going for that ward again. But now we see 5677 making the adjustment and not going too close. We saw him do that wrong twice before. Aatrox screws up his E, or his W rather, hits a minion, so he's not able to get to pull back on Lux. Um, and SVU starting to round out and be a little bit more patient. This is what I was hoping they would do from the get-go, but seems like now they're finally finding their stride, letting the fight come to them. Let the fight come to you. Here's Willy Wonka going for a 1v1, and this is looking decent, and there it is! Willy Wonka! He is now getting ganked by Warwick, and it looks like he will go down, but that's a huge solo kill and a confidence booster for Willy Wonka. He was getting smacked around by this guy the last two games. Put him on the Jace, and he shows you what's up. Now, he's down a little bit in CS, sure, but... That is a huge solo kill, and that's what we need out of Willy Wonka if we want to take this win. So here's Pleasant Plant going up against this Dread guy, trying to get the fight. And this is also a fight going on in bot lane. This is crazy. Pleasant Plant, though, does he know the limits? No, he can't. Can he get his ult off? No, and that's the Warwick. The Warwick, very potent in these low HP battles, has that extra attack speed, extra healing when the enemy is low on HP, so it's very hard to deal with him. Um, and it looks like the Vi did end up using his ult. I didn't quite catch it there. Um, but, yeah, so that's a kill going over to Warwick. Very unnecessary kill, and now the lane is frozen. Uh, on the Jace. So Willy Wonka is going to have a hard time here uh, unfreezing that. We'll have to see if he's able to use the Shock Blast. He does have double pinks up there in the river. So second dragon is approaching. Um, hopefully SVU might give this one up. Uh, you know, obviously the fourth dragon is the only one that really matters, but they get increasingly scarier as time goes on. So Aatrox stealing the, the Raptor camp from Pleasant Plant. And that's heads up play by him. Getting some pressure, getting some vision in the enemy jungle. And look at this invade by Morgana. And look, they're trying to camp the Willy Wonka. But this is the intelligence we see out of this player. He knows how to play weak side. And that's him just knowing Warwick's around, looking at his vision, playing it smart, not getting overextended. So, see what Pleasant Plant can do on the strong side of SVU, which is his bot lane. We have Harold still, and it's 40 seconds till plates go down. And Morgana is not here, neither is Caitlyn. So this is a huge push into this tower. We'll see how many plates they can get before the Rift Herald hits. And But we also have a swing in from Aatrox and Morgana. This could be an explosive fight. We have TPs all around. And so we'll see how SVU plays this. Here comes a TP in from Lux. Here goes Swammer. Pleasant Plant going in on Morgana. Can he get that kill? They have to kite back. Swammer. Doing tons of damage. There's Lux with the kill on Aatrox, but here comes Warwick. And they're cutting back, and they're at 1 HP. And Honey T-Bone doesn't die. How is that possible? And here comes Willy Wonka. Riven wants it. She wants a double kill, but she biffs the ult. And there's the dunk. Slam dunk. La Mickey style right on Riven's face. That is SVU. That's how we do it. So 7 to 6. SVU brings it back with a humongous team fight. That's what we needed. This should be dragging over to SVU. Caitlyn didn't die, but everyone else did, except for the Borgata, of course. So that was a huge three kill advantage over to SVU. They didn't lose anyone, and they played that perfectly. That's how they have to play. They have to kite back, absorb the engage from Swanee, and use their damage over a long period of time huge fight great mechanics all around so like that pretty much evens up the gold a slight little advantage as you'll see at the top of your screen in favor of svu but at this point in the game you know a couple hundred gold is whatever main thing you want to look for is these item completions we're seeing gore drinkers out of the side of swanee one two gonna be three with the atrox and we see clips divine sunderer and the ludens out of the side of SVU, and we're going to see if they go for some heal cut, because we have Warwick healing, we have Aatrox healing, we have the Gore Drinker on Riven. There is going to be quite a bit of healing, but it's not enough, I'd say, to build an enormous amount of heal cut. Um, we do have the Ignite on the Braum, in case someone gets fed, but oh, here, goes, here goes Willy Wonka! He wants a piece of this Aatrox, too! And he just smacks him, says, tries to send him back to mid lane. Don't be coming up here with that. Willy Wonka's having none of it. Great trade by him. Aatrox going to lick his wounds at the Krug camp. Gonna try to come back and maybe kill Willy Wonka in the future with his Ignite, but that time he had no shot. Lux going back in mid lane. Looking to clear this out. We have a roam up here by Warwick, though. Warwick and Riven coming up to kill Willy Wonka, but look at this weak side player. He knows how to play weak side. How many times do I have to say it? 
That is a great rotation out from him, not being greedy, looping back into his jungle, and now they're catching Warwick. 5677 though, they don't want to be too close. He's getting split up from his team. Can they get more kills on it? He gets that one, and there we go. Warwick is down. Huge kill from the Lux. What more can they do? Shoving out here. Bot lane. Tower does go down in favor of Swanee. Towers are a lot of gold. And that's going to be a lot of gold on this Caitlyn. This Caitlyn is the main issue out of the Sewanee side. So we'll have to see if they're able to play around it. Um, you know, one binding out of Lux, though. Lux is 4-1. and one. one binding on the Caitlyn should be a one shot. Uh, they do have the Morgana shield to kind of prevent that opportunity. But we'll see who can get the vision control to set up these picks. They look like they permanently lane swapped the Riven mid against the Lux, but there's a good binding from him. That's huge damage. Pleasant Plant going on to Sanji, really trying to shut down the mid laner out of Swanee, and there's a return on the tower kill and bot lane. So this is really turning out to be an exciting game, and both teams know how important this game is. Both teams know how this game kind of decides your future in regards of this bracket. Um, SVU poised to take a good fight here. They need to be patient until they group up as a team. That's where they're powerful. Uh, the Lux has AoE abilities, area of effect. So does the Jace. So does the Ezreal. Uh, and Swanee just charges at them like mad people, like mad Vikings. So we'll have to see which one turns out to be the superior strategy. This is where you find Caitlyn and Morgana to be quite annoying, though. Here in the mid lane, they can kind of just set up camp, siege, look for bindings. Um, we're seeing quite a CS lead on all the members of Swanee, regardless, like, except for jungle. Um, and that's gonna, you know, pay dividends for them in the long run. They have are only 300 gold behind and SVU is up two kills. So a lot of gold coming out of their farming. Good trade by Swammer there. Um, gotta not be too crazy on the Ezreal. Gotta keep that nice little buffer zone. And this is turning out to be a nice and slow mid game. And that's what. Oh, no. There it is. Oh, but he dodges it. But it flashes anyway. But Honey T Bone's going to go down here. That should be a kill for Swanee. Yes. Oh, and then the root onto Swammer. It looks like he got baited trying to help his teammate there. Caitlyn hits the Q. And that's two kills. That's not what you want to do if you're SVU. They're getting too aggressive there in the mid lane. Swammer just not playing safe. He needs to just kind of chill out there and farm. He took the aggressive E, and Warwick was waiting. 5677 in the top lane against the Aatrox. This is not great for the Lux. This is where uh, Swanee will have the advantage in these side lanes. And here comes a dive out of Aatrox. No, he finds not a good plan for him. So this is where you kind of might want to send the Ezreal top to deal with this guy and have the Lux be mid with the, um, with the Braum because... Lux can kind of lane, and there's a kill going over to Sanji. He ends up getting the Lux in the long run, and that's why she just doesn't have the mobility to really deal with these side lanes as well as uh, Ezreal could. Um, so for the next few minutes, it's going to be rough on him. He needs to, you know, just kind of collect waves and rotate, but it's not easy when, you know, you're up against an Aatrox in a long lane like that. So we do have the TP on Lux. Dragon's coming up. SVU trying to stall this out until they can... Uh, get a team fight so good poke out coming out we got 3,000 gold lead over in the side of swanee now svu might have to give up this dragon they have tp on lux will she use it here atrox is swinging from top lane it looks like svu might just give up this dragon uh, they are trying to poke out here finally comes the lux but here comes a huge flank out of atrox they need to track this atrox coming from the north they need to see him flanking because if they don't this is a very scary fight for them and here comes the engage there goes warwick he's flying in on the vi that's not the best target but it's decent enough here comes atrox he's killing one and he's going for more he's trying to get the knockup swammer eats the caitlin ult but doesn't kill him this is the return engage from svu this is huge they only lost one and that's not that bad there we go poke it back so that's what svu needs to do that Swanee's going to send this fist. SVU needs to absorb it and then give them a fist of their own. And that was very well played. Pleasant Plant did get caught out there by the Warwickle. He could have flashed it. He could have played around it. But he was a little slow there. SVU is getting a little greedy here, though, for this possible continued fight. They haven't actually done much damage. They did get some ults out, which is huge, especially for your Aatrox and your Riven. Uh, but the Caitlyn ult is kind of irrelevant. And she's your big problem. She's got two items. She's looking to bust down some heads with those 
And this is great poke, though, and that's huge. There's a flash out of Caitlyn, and you love to see that. That is a huge summoner spell taken away from her, and this should be Dragon going over to SVU. So, great fight there by SVU. Very smart, very patient, and they. I'm just worried about these side lanes because I don't think that they've really quite figured out their laning assignments quite yet. So... How will they play this next? These open objectives like this dragon and this baron are exactly what SVU want to fight about. That is fights they want. So they might go up to force a baron soon. Um, because those dances in the open ground is ideal for their comp. They can get picks with the Lux. They can see the enemy. There's no real flanks if they can keep their, their own jungle warded. Look out from odd angles. And if, if Swanee is running straight at them with five people... There, it's a losing fight, um, unless there's some absurd amount of like amazing play or something. But so Jace in the top lane playing weak side once again. Can Willy Wonka? Oh no, his spidey senses are not tingling yet, and that is not good. He is getting surrounded by multiple members of Swanee. He's running for the hills, but unable to get out, and that is a kill picked up by them. Um, and you know it's hard to blame him on that one. He just doesn't have pressure in any other lane. Like, the waves are pushing, which is good for SVU, but their heads are all in the base. And this is an early Baron attempt here from Swanee. I don't know if I like this out of them. Um, this is going to be a tricky fight for them. If, if SVU can sniff this out, this is nice open ground where they can get a good fight. So here we go. Braum finds the situation. He sees what's going on. He calls his team. Honey T-Bone going in. Here goes Pleasant Plant charging HQ, but it gets canceled. He... He goes in with a huge ulti, and there's the Baron. Does go over to Warwick, but Pleasant Plant is in there. Honey T-Bone trying to kite them back, trying to play safe. He killed Sanji goes down to Pleasant Plant. Pleasant Plant trying to get more, but he can't. He only gets one. Who can do anything else? They finally kill the Morgana. There we go. And they kill the Warwick. That's two kills going over to the Lux. Lux is 7-2. and two. Caitlyn's still alive. Two Baron buffs still live. But SVU does get some kills. So they lost a Baron. They got some kills. Are they able to turn this into any more success? That is what we'll have to find out. So, Caitlyn still sitting at 5-2. and two. She's got her two items. She's building a third. She's going to be dealing a huge amount of damage. Uh, with this lethality type build. She has the Lord Doms for the tanks. Uh, SVU just getting caught out there with the with the pick on Willy, but then they uh, they kind of won the 4v5 with the Baron's help. So they're looking to push here, looking to pressure. We'll have to see if that's a huge ulti. It almost gets the shutdown. You know 5677 seven was wanting that shutdown. Unable to get it, but that would have been huge. So he's going to be looking to land those binds on the Caitlyn permanently. Those are very important. That's very important for us to track here. Because um, that basically puts her completely out of the fight with no way to heal up. All right. So let's see, let's take count of what's going on here. 12 to 12. SVU down. 3,000 gold. Not, not an insurmountable amount of gold. Uh, especially when their comp is very reliant on peel. Um, gold doesn't matter if you can't shoot them. You can't hit them with your swords. So SVU just needs to play these team fights smart. They need to get the picks. They need to play patient. Um, and if they do that, they should be able to find the team fight success they're looking for. But these side lanes are a troublesome. Swanee doing a very good job playing the side wave game. Uh, Riven shoving in against the Jace. Jace hasn't quite got the items to deal with her at the present moment. Um, and we're seeing this kind of lull here with no dragon up. SVU just trying to defend their jungle, doing a good job fighting for vision. Here comes Riven trying to engage on the Jace. She has those Baron minions. Jace good disengage with his hammer form, trying to just survive this Baron push. Here comes Vi, though. This is a cheeky little gank here. If Riven has to kind of all in, looking for the Jace, but I don't think she's going to be able to do it. And that's a shutdown going over to Pleasant Plant. Huge gank by him. He snuck out of mid lane and got down there. Bromp setting up the shield, trying to save his AD carry. It looks like he's going to pay the ultimate price for it. Will they get a return kill? No, but here comes Pleasant Plant. Does this guy have super speed? He is everywhere. 5677 seven, won't let it go. He gets another one. Huge plays out of the team here from SVU. Here comes a huge fight. They need to pressure this. They have a dragon coming up. I don't know if they'll be able to get it. I don't know if they will be able to stack these dragons. But this Infernal Soul will kind of spell disaster for Swanee if SVU is able to get it. Because Infernal Soul, when you're running Jace, Lux, Ezreal... 
is just ridiculous. So Swanee knows that they are going to be here in full force to fight for these dragons. Um, and that's kind of the win con here for SVU uh, at this present moment. So there's Swammer. He's standing still. Not sure. He's probably just waiting to hit that blast cone. There's a pink ward in that bush, though, which he has not seen, which is not good. Um, any pink wards are a sign of where they're going to stage their attack from. Possible kill. They do get the Morgana ult for the Ezra ult. That's a good trade for SVU. Here comes Swanee. They do get the dragon already, though. They need to find their retreat path. They head left. Lux heads south. That's okay. That's a third dragon over to SVU. And they are one away from this Infernal Soul, which would be humongous for them. So five minutes from now, folks, grab your popcorn. That is where the next fight's going to be. Um, at least huge fight. So let's see what Swanee does to deal with this. Because they have been... You're seeing 100 CS lead in the top lane. You're seeing 40-ish, 30-ish in the bot lane and the side lane assignments are really favoring swanee um so svu needs to kind of figure out how they're gonna do that because they are while they're not bleeding gold they're still you know they're only 2k behind still um it's the levels you know you don't want those to get away from you we do have a, a level lead on a couple of uh, members here from swanee mid lane and top lane but not too much all right, so Lux eight and two. That is huge scoreline. Caitlyn six and one. Shutdown's already gone. Lux versus Caitlyn, pretty much the tail of this game at this point. But don't sleep on Ezreal. Ezreal's building some armor there, and he might just become unkillable at some point uh, with his kiting and his mobility and his poke and his bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. So we'll see how that happens. But I'm looking at this Lux. I'm looking at her positioning. I'm looking at her bindings. If, if 5677 can hit a bind on the Caitlyn, on the Warwick, you know, on the Riven, on the Aatrox, on anybody. I don't care who it is. If he hits somebody with a binding, they're taking a ton of damage. Now, what the heck is that stopwatch? That is a Zhonya's wasted. Accidentally used it. Happens to us all. I don't think it's ever happened to me. But, hey, can't all be me. So, SVU poking into this Baron side, trying to get vision up. They know this is where they like to fight. Um, they know that oh there's a huge body and that's got to be a kill yes it is unstoppable oh here comes the fight though where we're coming in raven following up that is not a good clumpage there's some zonias used by by lux can she get out no but ezreal's here can he clean this up biffed warwick goes wide ezreal looking to clean up the warwick there should be a kill over to him eventually yes it is vi doing a good job going deep and keeping the caitlin out of the fight almost killed the caitlin actually if you look at her health bar it is a smidge and that is a close fight and oh what a snipe swimmer from downtown love to see it there we go he is coming online he's been sleeping all game playing as real but now he finally can play the game atrox trying to hold this tower by himself good poke coming out from svu <laughs> swammer feeling his own right here does get the proc there on the stairs it's actually more important than you would think so if they have another fight that's a huge shield not going to be allowed uh, around for atrox um so let's get a little timer here going on the dragon spawn Let me click this real quick so it looks like we have a minute 50 on this dragon and that is a very huge objective um so we'll have to see how they do setting up for that. Um, SVU really looking to play back, like I've been saying. So, oh, actually, Swanee going for a Baron here. This is interesting. This is interesting. This didn't work great for him last time. And arguably, it helped him, but that's scouted out by Swammer. Heads up play by him. That's huge. Here comes Pleasant Plant. Here comes the rest of SVU. They're converging. Brom is slow, though. He's 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 a little far behind, but there's 5677 getting a huge little combo there on the Morgana. Does not time the ulti, but that's okay. Here goes Pleasant Plant. He's going in. He's dunking people. And there goes Brom. That is a huge all out of him. There goes... Oh my goodness, SVU just annihilated them. That is two kills over. This is going to be the Baron for SVU. Swanee did not have the setup they wanted. And unless they can do a miracle steal, this is going to be a Baron over to SVU with huge implications. Because guess what? 45. Oh, there's a shock blast out of Jace. There goes Caitlyn. And that's the main carry here from Swanee dead to right. And guess what's happening in 35 seconds? 
Infernal Soul. And that, as I've been saying, is humongous for SVU. So they are going to shove out mid. They have Baron. They have all the momentum. They have Infernal Soul coming up in 20 seconds. They're setting up for that now. They all know. Everyone in this game knows. Sanji needs to, if his time for his moment, it has to be coming now. He has been silent this game. His Aatrox has been silenced by 5677. Pleasant Plant has got his Vi has stepped up. Willy Wonka has got his Jace has stepped up. Swammer, I've never seen him play Ezreal before, but he's stepping up. And Honey T-Bone's always doing, the, you know, doing his thing. So, here goes Willy Wonka. Here comes Sanji. See how pissed he is. He wants some revenge, but he can't have it. They're too coordinated here at SVU. He can't do it by himself, and he gets smoked by the squad of SVU, and they are looking to push mid lane. Here comes... Swammer trying to clear that minion wave. They got to get the minion wave set up for this inevitable push to an inhibitor. So. Righteous Blank shoving in the side lane. Here comes SVU. They are shoving mid with the Baron buff. That's a big ulti out of Lux. They do get the shield from the Sterex off Warwick, and it looks like they're looking for possibly more. And this is smart. Righteous Blank ha is in the side wave, and the only way to really get him to come back is by putting heavy pressure on the Nexus. And I don't see any defense here out of Sw Swanee. Here comes SVU. This could be the game. This could be it. They're killing these towers with, with, with no regard. So there goes Warwick. He's flying in, but he gets melted. SVU, they're pressuring the Necklace. They, they could get it right here. Swammer, he's going for kills. Kill the Nexus. And yes, SVU, they are going to do it. That is a humongous game three win. SVU had the game plan. They scouted him out over the weekend. They got annihilated in game two. But here in game three, they come up with a humongous win. That was huge. This puts them at three and one. This puts them up there with some of the top teams in this league. So that is huge props to them. Thank you all. Whoever could show up this late on a Monday night, I know it's not easy. I know y'all have sleep and things to do, but at least our boys pulled through in the 30-minute long game. That was an awesome win by them. So next week, we're going to have another game. It'll probably be next Tuesday at 7, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, we also have a game tomorrow. One of our other League of Legends teams, we're going to be trying to stream their game tomorrow so if you want to see some different faces or maybe you have some different people you want to root for um like the likes of locker 74 or p diddy 12 those guys we've seen them last year we haven't seen them yet this year they're going to be showing up tomorrow so make sure you tune into that stream uh, that'll be at 7 p.m eastern time all right but thank you to all who are here and that is me signing off